In the revolution to cordless tools, cordless drills were first. When the cordless drill showed up, everyone in my generation thought, wow, now I can drill holes without dragging a cord around, and I was right. But it wasn't long before we realized, wow, not only can we drill holes, but we can put in screws and we can get rid of our Yankee screwdrivers. And we were right about that too. It wasn't long after that that somebody realized, wait a minute, in the same way that an impact wrench will put a lug nut on a wheel much more effectively than a big drill will put a nut on a wheel, an impact driver is gonna put a screw in better than just a drill motor. So these guys look very similar, and in a lot of ways they are. But I'm gonna go through the features in each, that is the drill and the impact driver, and try to point out where they overlap and where they diverge. And in some cases, they really diverge. You've probably already noticed that these tools often come as a set. There's a reason for that. And that is that even though they look the same, they each compensate for the other tool's weakness. And that's the first characteristic of a good set, right? The drill has a wider range of options for how much power and how fast the power is transferred from the batteries through the motor, through the transmission, to the chuck. First of all, there's a high and low speed setting on the top of almost any um, drill that you're going to pick up that's cordless. You may want higher speed, lower torque. You may want lower speed, higher torque, more controllable, and that's accomplished by this sliding switch. The next thing is that there's a clutch between the power and the actual bit that can be loosened or tightened so that on a little bitty screw, like think of in a, a jewelry box or something where the screw is little tiny, you don't want to strip it. <laughs> the clutch will kick in and it will slip before it does any damage. On the other end of the spectrum, you can rotate the clutch to the drill mode and it will just keep going until you just physically have to overpower the entire powertrain to stop it for drilling holes or maybe for a really big aggressive screw. So these guys exist for drilling holes. That's why there are more options in the speed and the torque. There are a few other things you can do. You can put a rotary brush can be chucked up in here and spin it and maybe wire brush out the inside of a, I don't know, maybe a cylinder on a rebuild of some kind of a little motor. Or you can put a paint mixing paddle, a paint paddle into one of these things and mix grout, you can mix glue, you can mix paint, you can mix things with this and it does fine because it's a smooth discharge of power all the way out, whatever speed you pick. These guys are fundamentally different in the way that they get the torque to the workpiece. Now with the disclaimer that I am not an engineer, I'm not a tool manufacturer, I'm not a physicist, and so some of what I say may be nonsense as I try to describe what I think is happening in getting the impact driver to provide the impact, but the power with an impact driver happens because the spinning includes a hammering motion. There is some impact that is happening as the turn happens which applies the power in sudden little increments, which tends to change the way that the interface between the screw tip and the head of the screw works. One of the first things you'll notice when you use an impact is that the head of your screw does not so often disengage itself from your screw tip, even with the dreaded and much maligned Phillips tip. An impact driver, as it is using impact to turn the screw, is using the impact to sort of reseat and keep your screw tip fully in contact with the head of the screw. You don't strip out as many heads. The second thing is there's something about that impact and the variable speed that provides real controllability because as the screw begins to get to the flush setting, as soon as you get off the trigger and the impact stops, the power that's driving the screw in is interrupted and the screw stops going forward. Whereas with a drill, the momentum that exists in the powertrain keeps turning that screw in for just a little bit after you get off the trigger. And it's easy to overset the screw if you're using a drill instead of an impact driver. Impact drivers cater often to screws and screw tips by, for instance, on this Porter cable, having a little magnet right there. Because they know or they anticipate that you're probably going to need a selection of screw tips and for the different screw sizes and types with you. So if you're not familiar with how these things feel, you know, when you're using them, first time you pick one up, you're in for a real eye-opening experience. It will blow your mind at how big a screw 
these little guys will run into structural softwood lumber. They punch miles above their weight. I mean, look at it. A little tool like this will run a screw in like that all the way to, it will bury it. It will pull that head clear out of sight in this Simpson structural screw. This GRK was two and a half inches longer before one of these guys, I can't remember which one, snapped it off. That is the equivalent of a quarter inch lag screw. That's a very serious fastener. And these little lightweight guys just hammer it. Hammer is the key word. Something about impact, that sudden application of the energy in that, in that swing press. Hello. As our friend up north calls it. No, he didn't call it a, yeah, a swing press. Uh, there's something about the way that energy is discharged that completely changes the work that gets done. That's the advantage of an impact driver. So in this video, I've got nothing to say about brands. All I'm talking about is a drill and an impact driver and how versatile they are. And here's the takeaway. If you can swing it, don't make the mistake of just buying one. Buy them as a set because the sum of the parts is much greater than the capacity of the individual items. There will be times when without both tools, you will only get half the work done or have to spend twice the time to do it. And quite frankly, your risk of failure goes up if you don't have the capacity that both of these very similar tools bring to the party. Think of it, their overlap allows for them to function individually, but the way they complement each other increases the functionality of each tool. Having both of these tools also extends the life of each tool because you are not either slightly or profoundly abusing one, asking it to do the job that the other is perfectly suited for. And so when you have both options and know where their strong suits are, they're both gonna live a lot longer in your toolbox, in your truck, in your shop, or in the drawer in the kitchen where you keep all your go-to tools. So here's my last, my last rant, okay? When you're ready to go down and buy the set, you know where they are, you've made up your mind, and you're gonna go buy them. You've got to get a full set of the accessories that go with the impact driver. Because they come in sets now. And you, I mean, I don't care what brand you get of these things, because you're gonna lose them, I, I lose them anyway. But get some set of the bits of the different, for different types of screws, the different lengths of the screw tips, the magnetic bit holder, some sockets, whatever else you can get that comes in the set that you feel like spending the money on, you've got to have it or you're not going to be able to get the full advantage of having an impact driver with your drill motor. Now you already understand the drill bits you need, I'm going to assume, and maybe you've got them or maybe you can go get them. By the way, always get those in sets too. It's just such a cost saver. But however you do it and whenever you do it, I hope that they come for you as a set and then that you start paying attention as to when it's the impact driver and when it's the drill motor that's gonna do the work. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.